Yeah. Nice. Steve just Ladies and gentlemen, we are here on a gorgeous lake in eastern Washington. Got a great day at the end of March. Uh, today our cameraman Clint will be fishing with us. I think it'll be a great show. Stick around. Steve and Clint were trolling woolly buggers beneath massive basalt cliffs. Look at, look at the, yeah, right up behind you there, Steve. Oh yeah, yellow-bellied marmot. Huh, it's cool. Is he gonna whistle at you? I don't know what he's gonna do. Watching me catch a fish, hopefully. Pretty good sized one. All right, there we go. I may have to switch to a red fly. The fish was giving Clint quite a tussle. Oops. See him? The fish was near the boat, and Clint sat down to get into position to grab the net. With the net in hand, Clint managed to pull the fish closer. Yeah, I wish I had a nine foot rod. <laughs> Finally, Clint netted the fish. There we go. So, these are just big, fat rainbows. Look at this. These are just incredible. And that's that's one of the small ones that we've been catching out of here. It's just, it's amazing. There's big ones in here. Let's go get them. There's one. All Got right. One. All right, that's good news. Coronamid worked. The setup we're using is pretty standard for coronamids. We've got a nice uh, indicator, strike slip indicator, and then We'll go whatever distance to our first fly. We've been about nine to 10 feet, and then that's a snow cone coronamid. And then we also have another snow cone down below at the very bottom. So even though we're not seeing coronamids hatching right now, we know they hatched yesterday. And so we're fishing the larva and the pupa because they are there on the bottom days before the hatch. That's cool. It was kind of doing like you were doing yesterday. I was moving it quite a bit. Plus we've got a lot more wind action here today. I'm not sure which fly that he took, but We've got the blood worm on there and then the coronamid pupa. It's a good fighting fish, man. The fish was not giving up easily, but eventually Steve got the upper hand. That's a nice rainbow. Oh, I got him. Yeah, now he took the blood worm. Look at that thing. Just a football belly on him. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that was cool. On the coronamid uh, blood worm. And uh, just started fishing with it here a little bit. Even though there's not a hatch coming off, these uh, larvae will be in the, in the mud and the pupas will be down there just below the, or just on the, uh, just off the mud, I guess. Even though they're not hatching, they're still down there. So the fish are feeding on them. Awesome. I just got out and got anchored about 10 feet of water and the fish hit right away. 
Yeah, nice. Steve just caught a real nice fish on the chronomid, so we switched spots. Awesome. Nice job, lad. It's very important to know the depth when you're chronomid fishing. I anchored about 10 feet of water, so I had about nine feet of leader from my indicator to my bottom fly. And boy, oh shoot, it's around the anchor rope. It's getting uh -oh. close. Gosh, dang it. That was close to the anchor rope, but he's off. Just a little bit, just a little bit of a cluster here. But nothing more than usual, except the net's wrapped around a pole. Here we go. I think I'm ready now. Oh yeah, it's one of those oh boy. little darker one. Beautiful color. Right in there. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh nice. man. It's a big one. <laughs> oh yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's, that's nice trout. Big guys. Wow. Yeah, that's a nice trout. Oh boy. It's just too big. Wow. Oh my gosh. That was a nice fish on the chronomid. Yes. Yeah, that's a good idea coming over here. I mean, Clint and Steve fished, you could see the bay over there, and they had some pretty good strikes and woolly buggers. But uh, we decided to come over here and chronomid fish, and so far it's paid off. Good job. Thanks. And I was fishing uh, probably 15 feet off the shore, and I was picking up weeds on my fly. So I just uh, cast another three feet out. It was clear water, and that's where I started hitting fish. The fish made a powerful run. It's a little bigger fish than I caught earlier. We got a nice look at the fish and there was no doubt it was a large one. <laughs> On the blood worm? Clint gradually worked the fish close. Oh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, it is. Good job, Clint. Whoa, big fish. Beautiful. There we go. These are, this one's maybe not real long, but he is just so fat and he won't close. There we go. There you go, right by Right the over my line. No, I didn't go over it. Uh, I missed it by two inches to the left, which I was trying to do. That's what you were trying to do? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, we'll find out when we both start fighting a fish and it happens to be each other. I'll tell you what, if a fish does hit it. Oh, man. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Paul? Who, who wants to reel in? Let me be weird to me. There's one. Hey, all right. Good job, Clint. Is it a good one? I think it's a baby. Baby? <laughs> I don't think there's any babies in this lake. Well, now he's starting to pull a little bit. Yeah. When I hooked into this fish, I, I didn't think it was very big. It, there wasn't a lot of pull at the beginning. But as I was pulling him in, he decided he didn't like that idea, and he put up a pretty good fight. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's a nice fish. He's got a lot of color on him. They're all pretty nice in this lake. Not tire him out too much. Good job, Clint. Another one of these nice big rainbows. This one's got a lot of color on him. And there he goes. Beautiful. Nice. Fishing with coronamids here in about 10 feet of water. Drop down about nine feet under the indicator and just let it drift and give it a little jerk every once in a while to get some motion on it. And they're coming up and hitting it. It's been a lot of fun. So. If I get in a little closer to shore, I'm, I'm dragging in the grass. It's like, and then 
out about three feet, and that's where Steve, two feet. I don't hate to interrupt, guys, but <laughs> I got, got a, a fish pretty on. good fish on here. Right. Oh, oh, nice jump. Smokes with a jump. Nice. Wow. <laughs> that thing rocketed. Big jumping fish. Got about 10, 12 feet of anchor rope over here and that's not where I want the fish to go. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little side pressure on them. Yeah, it's a good fish. I reached for the net and put it where I could easily access it. Right up to the tip of my fly line. I don't wanna go past that because I don't want it to hit that knot. Oh yeah. It's a beauty. They all seem to be. This guy's got to be getting tired. Well, maybe not. Yikes. Oh yeah, beauty. Wow. Yeah, that's a little different colored fish. It's a darker fish. I think some of these fish are going into, is it a fall spawn? Boy, big fat, big fat ombre. And then oh, yeah. another nice fish in the chronomid. So anyway, it's been a great day here and we're gonna just keep plugging away with these things and a lot of fun. Tip of the week is brought to you by Northwest Outfitters, located at the village at Riverstone in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I'm sure that there are a fish or two off that ledge, don't you think? Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh wow. No, yeah, you got it. Good strip. <laughs> yeah, that looked uh, really suspicious. I couldn't see the thing and then... See how that fish got all the way to his feet before he even started reeling? That fish ran right at him and he had to strip it in. Still has it on. Oh, that's a beautiful... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's one of the nicer fish I've seen. As far as just perfect. Nice. Oh, nice my goodness. Cutthroat. Beautiful cutthroat. Trophy West Slope Cuddy. I was this close to not coming tight on that fish. Didn't know it was a fish. I thought it was just starting to drag. And sure enough, uh, certainly for me, the fish of the day was at the end of that. Yeah, that and, what, and what, I was, what I thought was cool is we've had a couple of really nice fish, but that was a huge fish yeah. in my mind. We had the other fish, like where the indicator went down. Yeah. That one. The biggest fish we've caught out of this bucket, the indicator moved the littlest. Barely. You know, and like you said, I almost didn't, but thank God you did. Why not? Thank God you did. <laughs> yeah, glad we did that tip earlier. Yeah. Get him. Yeah, so that was, that was really cool. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right, Steve. Yeah. Fish. <laughs> yeah, hit the big red one. Is that what you have on that? Red yeah, I switched. Butter? Clint gave me his pole. Nice. Yeah. Coming at me. Boy, there's some fan to that rod. Yeah, well, it's a four weight rod. <laughs> yeah, it's a four weight rod. That'll do it. Yeah. It's a nice trout down there. Steve continued to work the fish toward him and got ready with the net. Nice. Beautiful fish. That was pretty cool, just trolling along, switching speeds, kind of curving back and forth and hit on one of the turns. So it's good fish. Ooh, there's one. All right. Yikes. Oh boy. Oh wow, oh, another boy. one. Awesome. Another big jump. Whoa. Crazy. 
Better get out of your way here. I was trolling right next to the cliff. I was trying to get as deep as I could. Fish hit, boom, great fish. Finally hit one along this cliff. Yeah, it's on the black woolly bugger? Yeah, it was a black woolly bugger with a little purple flash in it, uh -huh. or blue flash. Likes the shade. Yep, seeking refuge. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, oh boy, a double. Missed him. Might have missed him though. You still have him? Uh, I don't think so. He's right there. Yep, here we go. He's getting close. And he's in. Big rainbow, like many of the others caught. There she goes. All right, just trolling a nice black woolly bugger right along the cliff, and Steve just caught one earlier, and then I pounded that one right there. It's been a pretty cool trip so far, a lot of nice fish. Ladies and gentlemen, we just have a gorgeous day here in March, catching a ton of fish, and I just feel like I'm on top of the world. Good hit, got him? Yep. Nice, there we go. Awesome, awesome job. Got your darn right hand real. Awesome. But I shortened way up. Yeah. Clint continued to battle the hard fighting fish. He's not ready to come in yet. I think it's getting close now though. Clint managed to bring the fish nearer the boat where he was ready with the net. Ah, come on back, yeah. Nice. Very good. Just fat. Fat rainbow trout. Look at that. He worked hard. We got to let him rest for a little while. There she goes. Oh boy. I tell you, it's been a little slow for a while, but I think maybe things are going to start to pick up again. Getting later in the day, I think the hatch is starting to come off and hopefully things are, are looking up. Oh, there we go. All Got right. To hit. Fish on. Yeah, oh, look at that. He's jump. jumping right next to you, lad. This fish hit really hard, jumped right away, and then ran right at me, so I had real fast to catch up to it. But I got him. The pink fly. The pink one? <laughs> yeah, pink woolly bugger. Nice job, Steve. Got him. Awesome. Nice fish. Pretty awesome. Look at that thing. Put up a good fight, jumped really nice, and uh, made a good, good couple runs. Came right at me for a while, had to catch up with it, but got him in and surprised me. The pink fly, I wasn't too sold on it, but it got a fish. Good job. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the show. We had a great time. Please join us next week for more Fishing with Ladin. Be sure to join us next time for more Fishing with Ladin. Because we're having fun catching fish. Hey folks, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.